Thank you for joining us for Easter at High Ridge. If this is your first time here, we're excited that you've chosen to join our family today. Don't miss out on getting your family photo taken at our free photo booth located in the patio room by the cafe. Before we continue with service, we'd like to take a moment to share some upcoming opportunities. Did you know that we have specific services designed for kids kindergarten through 6, students in 7th through 12th, and young adults ages 18 to 30? Our kids' services are held during each weekend service, while our young adult service is on Tuesdays and our student service is on Wednesdays, both at 7 p.m. Do you like to sleep in on the weekends? If so, then our Saturday night service might be the perfect fit for you. It's the same experience as our Sunday services, but at 6 p.m. every Saturday. Next weekend is Vision Weekend here at High Ridge. Vision Weekends are designed to help you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and to make a difference as you take steps in your spiritual growth. Baptism is an important spiritual step in your walk with Christ. If you've taken the first step of salvation, then we would greatly encourage you to take this next step of spiritual obedience and baptism. We will have baptisms during each service next weekend. Don't miss your opportunity to take this next step of obedience. If you've ever wanted to know more about High Ridge and become a part of the spiritual family, join us on April 8th at 5 p.m. for our next membership class. Childcare is included. Register online or on the High Ridge app. To register for baptism, membership class, or for more information on anything mentioned today, you can visit highridgechurch.com or download our High Ridge app from the App Store or Google Play. Thank you again for spending Easter with us this weekend. We look forward to all the things the Lord is going to speak to you today as we continue to pursue our vision of helping people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Hello, High Ridge Church. Brian and Beth Brookins here from Fort Lauderdale, Riverside Church. And we want to say thank you. You helped us this past year right after a hurricane. Horrible timing for us and your generosity carried us through a very difficult time. Thank you and happy you. Easter. Hello, High Ridge Church. This is Wayne Drain in Russellville, Arkansas. Sure enjoyed being with you last year at the Prophetic Presbytery. Looking forward to being with you again this year. I just want to wish you a happy Easter as we join with thousands of people around the world to celebrate our risen Lord. God bless you guys. Hey, High Ridge, Fort Worth, Pastor Zach here, all the way from Graham, Texas. And man, we're just so excited to celebrate Easter with you guys. And we just wanted to say from all the way in Graham, Texas, Happy Easter! Love you, Pastor Jeff. Hey, High Ridge Church, this is Scott and Trina Rambo from the Bridge Fellowship in Sugarland, And we just want to tell you thank you so much for the generous gift that you sent to us right after Hurricane Harvey. Your gift allowed us to minister to families, to give them encouragement and hope and strengthen them during that most difficult, devastating time. So thank you so very much. It really did. And so from our church to yours, we just want to say Happy Easter. From all of us at High Ridge Longview, we want to say Happy Easter! He is risen! Happy Easter, everybody. So thrilled to see you all in church, and welcome and happy Easter to everyone watching online as well. Hi, Ridge family. Will you join me in welcoming people watching from 58 countries around the world and 38 of the United States? Let's welcome them into our family today. God bless you all. So if you're new here today, Hi, Ridge Church has three campuses, and I set up a little competition between the three pastors, Zach and Graham and Tim and Longview to see who could have the most exciting Happy Easter greeting to the other churches. And so you saw Pastor Zach's strategy. You know, at the end, did you catch that? Love you, Pastor Jeff. So that was his way to try to win. And then you saw Pastor Tim's strategy was just volume. And um, so Longview wins because Pastor Tim has such a big... So he'll listen to this and then wonder why you're laughing when I said that. Easter is an awesome holiday. Uh, it's, it's awesome for children. Candy. Kids love candy, and Easter is something that they, they get some candy. So, parents, we decided we would do you a favor today, and after service, 
we're going to help your children get high, sugar high on candy, and send them home with you so that you can exercise what the teaching was about today in the car on the way home. (laughs) There will be an Easter egg, egg hunt, which you've already been told of. You know what Easter egg hunts prove? Easter egg hunts prove that your children can find what they're looking for when they want to. <laughs> Easter's a great holiday for moms, too. I read this week that moms, one mom said this. She said, I've hidden all of my children's Easter chocolate in a very good place, my stomach. <laughs> well, the real reason for Easter is not about a bunny that legs A's, which if you were in biology, you know that can't happen. Uh, nor is it about candy. The real reason for Easter, the real celebration, is because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came out of the grave. And we're here to celebrate, as Angel Gabriel spoke, well, early on Sunday morning, he said, he is risen, he is risen indeed. And so I had the privilege of being in Israel recently, and I hope in a couple years to take a whole bunch of you with me when I go back. And uh, while there, was able to do a little video clip. I did nine video clips. We'll play those in sermons throughout the rest of the year, but was able to do one at the empty tomb. And this is the reason why we're here today. Watch this clip. Hey everybody, Jeff here from the Holy Land again, from the city of Jerusalem. We just came out from a tour of of the garden tomb. I was just able to walk into the place where many believe Jesus was laid to rest for three days after he was crucified. We were just able to look up on a hill called Golgotha, called Calvary. What a powerful moment. And you know what the greatest thing about it is? The, the, the reason why we can triumph in the resurrection of Christ, Jesus conquered sin and death. He came out of the grave. There's not another religious leader that can make that claim or a group of followers that can make that claim. But our Lord conquered sin and death. He came out of the grave. What's the point? The point is, is that we get to live an abundant life every day because God came to earth, gave his life as a sacrifice so that anyone who believes in him can experience the same abundant life, the same powerful life that he did, and can receive that life for themselves. God bless you, friends. Talk to you again. There it is, everybody, and if you'll notice, there's no one laying there. Do you know why? Because he rose from the grave. He conquered sin and death, and he triumphed over every dark thing we've ever thought, ever said, ever done. He took care of all of them so that we wouldn't have to take care of them ourselves. That's good news. So I have a message of hope for you today. So if you're a note taker, you'll see the title come on the screen. Hope in a hopeless world. Having hope in a hopeless world. 2018 years ago, the disciples didn't have much hope. They were very discouraged. As a matter matter of fact, Peter went back to his former way of thinking, just started cussing all the time. John was so hopeless and so afraid, he was running around naked and some say he didn't really even know. He was so scared that that's how hopeless he was at that point. And I just believe that that the enemy of your life, as he does against my life, would come to you sometimes, maybe, maybe he has this morning or this week or recently, and try to steal your hope away. Well, I have good news today. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we can have hope. So if you're here today and you're at a 99% hope quotient, good for you. I want to try to help you get that next 1%. Or if you're here today and you're at a 1% hope quotient, I want to help you recover the other 99 so that you can so that you can experience on Easter 2018 the hope that God gives us. And this comes to us out of Romans chapter 15. Now there are many passages that speak about the resurrection. I chose Romans 15 this year because I want you to see the concept of hope. So this is the Holy Spirit speaking through the Apostle Paul and we'll pick up in verse three. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. What what is this saying here? Well, that word insults is describing that dark moment when darkness covered the earth for three hours as Jesus hung on the cross on a Friday during the daytime. Complete and total darkness covering the earth. And this word insults describes what happened at that very moment when darkness took over. Here's what I believe. I believe the angels of God gathered every evil thought, every evil word, every evil action from the four corners of the earth, and they drove all of the darkness and every demon spirit, they drove all of that darkness into the body of Jesus Christ because he was the only one who could effectively deal with it. And that's what insults means here. Jesus was insulted, but he didn't do it with regret. He did it with great joy. He took on all of the darkness 
that this world has ever known. You see, the crucifixion was a sacrificial act of love. The resurrection is a supernatural act of hope. Because God loves us, he wants us to live in hope. And I pray you grab hold of that today. You see, hope is an assess, a necessary commodity for a blessed life. A necessary commodity for a blessed life. So let's see hope connected to the resurrection in the next verse. Verse four. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance, somebody say endurance, and the encouragement, somebody say encouragement, of the scriptures, we might have, what's that next word? So that we might have hope. See, God will meet you where you are in order to take you where he wants you to go. And if you walked into service today and you're a long ways away from God, I've got good news for you. Nobody's here is going to judge you. I was in that place one time in my life. Unfortunately, the people that I was around at that time were very judgmental. They were more than willing to tell me how bad I was. But guess what? I think you already know that. If you're not walking with God here today, I think you already know in your heart that there's more for you. And I just, just want to announce a message of hope. Today's your day. Today's the day you can come back and start walking with God again. Today's the day when your hope quotient can become full. Why? Because Jesus wants to fill you with hope today, my friend. And he wants to bless you with something that you really can't effectively do for yourself. God will meet you and take you where he wants you to go. So let's take a look at those two key words, how to gain a hope that lasts. And the two key words that we just spoke, first is embrace endurance. Through endurance, you'll find hope. There's a word in the Bible that those of us that live in this generation and in this day don't like. And that word is the word wait. Many times in scripture it says wait. Matter of fact, one that I have memorized, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles, they'll run and not grow weary, they'll walk and not faint. But if I were to ask you, do you like to wait, do you enjoy waiting? I don't think anybody in here, if you're being honest, would say yes. If I were to say when you start pulling into Chick-fil-A and you can see the line is 14 cars back, do you just go, oh, glory. I'm so excited to sit here and get my chicken in a half an hour. No, we, we don't like to wait, am I right? When you walk to the phone store and you see there's a line out of the store, you just go, yay, I get to wait to get my broken phone fixed. No, we don't like to wait. We don't like to wait. We want the channels to change just like that. We, we want higher speed on our, on our devices so that we don't have to wait that extra second for whatever it is that we want to pop up on the screen to pop up on the screen. That's the mindset of today's age, but it's not God's mindset. Sometimes God has us waiting. Sometimes God wants us to wait. You see, it's God's pleasure to give you your heart's desires, but it's his practice to do so on his timetable and not yours. Sometimes we have to wait. The disciples had to wait three long days. Jesus said he was gonna rise from the grave, but those three days must have been hell on earth waiting, waiting for that promise to be fulfilled. And as I stated earlier, I think they lost their hope. And some of you, I think, perhaps have lost hope. Waiting is not easy. But yet, sometimes God does that with us. Why? Because he wants to bless us. Now, in the midst of waiting, here's what I've discovered. I'll just be honest with you. I've had to wait for things all of my life. Right now, waiting for the Lord to bless us so we can expand and touch more people. Praise the Lord for all of you being here today. And uh, so thankful that you're in this service. We need more room. Can somebody in this service say amen? Amen. We need more room, and, and, but, but we've been waiting for that. I don't like to wait. Here's what I've discovered while I wait. The enemy likes to whisper nonsense into my mind. Stuff like, God's not listening to your prayers, bucko. That's the enemy. God doesn't call me bucko. <laughs> God doesn't care anymore. You're off track. It ain't happening. It isn't gonna happen. And, and you know what I'm talking about. You know those lies that come to you and it sounds like your voice, but it doesn't really sound like your heart? That's the enemy. That's the enemy. See, God wants to bless us. He wants, he wants anticipation to grow while we wait. He doesn't want us to default and to pull away from the blessing right on the other side of the waiting period. How many of y'all remember, those of you that are older will remember a, a, a commercial that started out with a, a hand reaching onto a table and picking up 
a bottle of Heinz ketchup. Anybody remember that? Now, this is before pop tops were invented. Uh, so girls back in the day, uh, there had to be somebody in the house that had good grip to be able to open all the lids. Still, still the case with some. I get to do it all the time. But, but in this commercial, take the Heinz ketchup bottle, unscrew the lid, and turn it upside down. There's a plate of fries, I think, sitting there. And uh, does anybody remember the commercial? What happened when the, when the Heinz ketchup jar was turned upside down, when the bottle was turned upside down? What happened? Everybody say it with me. Nothing. Not a thing. And then a song comes on. Do you remember the song? Anticipation. Anticipation. It's making me wait. And right as the song finishes, what happens? The ketchup starts coming out of the ketchup bottle. God wants us to have anticipation. He doesn't want us to default and give up. It's the anticipation that brings the blessing. I was reading this week about a guy that was walking in a park and he saw a Little League baseball game going on and he walked along to the first base side and he, he just spoke to the first base, the, the boy that was standing there playing first base and said, hey, how's it going? The boy didn't say anything. So then, then the guy says, well, hey, what's the score? The little boy looks at him and says, 18 to nothing. We're behind. So then the guy goes, wow, you must really be discouraged. He looked back and said, I'm not discouraged. We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. Somebody's here today, and you're behind right now, 18 to nothing. And you know what I'm talking about. And you know God knows what I'm talking about. You, you sense it in your spirit. Well, here's the attitude you need to have. It's not that I'm losing. It's not the attitude that I'm going to lose. Here's the attitude you need to have. I haven't even got up to bat yet. And man, when I get up to bat, some good stuff's fixing to happen because I know God's on my side. I'm going to live with hope. And I pray that you grab hold of that. And walk with that today. Don't lose hope during the wait. Can somebody say that sounds good to me? Don't lose hope during the wait. Here's the second key word that I want you to grab hold of. And it's the word encouragement. Enlarge encouragement. Encouragement from the scriptures, it says. So I haven't asked you yet, but I want to ask you, where, where do you find hope? Where do you go to for encouragement? Or whom do you go to for hope and encouragement? One of the things I've discovered being a man and, and having, having uh, many, many friends, many men friends, is that men aren't that good at, at giving hope or giving encouragement to others. But we're real good at putting everything that burdens us on our wives. Now, God bless the girls. They're good at encouraging each other and sharing hope. But what I've discovered is there's many men walking in American Christianity today that the only one who gets your burdens is the one who loves you the most. And I'm here to tell you that's not fair to her. So when I ask where do you get your encouragement, where do you get your hope, a lot of guys will go, my girl, she's so good. Well, guys, I just want to encourage you to recognize something. You need to connect with other men. And it's going to be all right when you do. Matter of fact, if I were to ask for a show of hands of how many men in this room have connected with other men in a small group, hands would go up and they would say, yes, right on, it was awesome, it was great. Where do you find hope? Where do you find encouragement? Is it in a person? If so, can that person handle it? And if not, then I wanna, I wanna just prod, prod you and kind of probe in your spirit for a second to get you to think about living the way that Christ wants you to live, connected with other believers. See, in the midst of every difficulty lies opportunity. And sometimes it takes a friend or a small group member to help you recognize what the opportunity is so that you can step over into hope and get out of doubt and unbelief. And that's part of the joy of the resurrection. God wants us to stay in hope, and you find hope from the word, as it says in Romans 15. So I wanna give you just a few verses from a guy that had some real high ups and downs in life. He had moments when he was in great despair. He had moments when he was on the mountaintop and just writing songs, thanking God. But I want you to see where King David found his hope. So look at the screen. Here are some scriptures. Psalm 119.43. He says this, I have put my hope in your laws. Now, what's King David talking about there when he says, I've put my hope in your laws? He's talking about 10 awesome, wonderful statements that God gave to a guy named Moses, and we know them as the Ten Commandments. And many of us have been taught by the culture around us that God is a killjoy, and the Ten Commandments are proof of that. Friend, I want to tell you that that is a lie could not be more opposite of the truth. The Ten Commandments provide a wonderful guideline for life, 
And when you live within the guidelines of, of those laws, you enjoy a blessed life. And we're going to teach you about the Ten Commandments this summer. I want to encourage you to be here. The summer series this year is going to be awesome. Let's go on. Verse 74. I have put my hope, there it is again, my hope in your word. In your word. The average length of time now for Christians in America to read the scripture every day is, are you ready? 2.7 seconds. What that means is, is there's a lot of people that call themselves Christians that don't want to read what Christ had to say. That don't want to see what Christ did. And I'm not here to get on to you. I'm just here to encourage you today to recognize God loves you and he gave you a book to tell you that. It's called the Bible. And one of the greatest places to find hope, one of the greatest places to turn when you're wrestling through something is to break the pages open and say, Lord, speak to me, and he will do it every time. And King David did it himself. Verse 81, my soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my, what's that next word? My hope in your word. Verse 114, Psalm 119, 114. You are my refuge and my shield. In other words, God is your best protector. I have put my hope in your word. Wow. Where do you find hope? Where do you find hope? The best place, always a guarantee, is in the word. The scriptures will give you hope. And I want to encourage you to let it strengthen your life. In a hopeless world, we find encouragement and hope from the Bible, from the Word of God. I want to tell you about a guy, tell you a story about a guy, but, well, it's a, it's a real account of a guy named Joseph Scriven. And uh, born in Dublin, Ireland, had a pretty normal life until age 20, on the eve of his wedding. His fiancée, the love of his life, decides to take a walk. She slips and falls down an embankment into a pond, begins drowning, yelling and screaming for help. Uh, the rescuers didn't get there in time to rescue her. She lost her life on the eve of their wedding. Scriven was devastated. He was crushed. He began to find any, any means possible to try to drown his sorrows and to try, to try to medicate his grief. He began to do this and do that. He began to travel. Anything possible. He was looking for encouragement and hope anywhere he could find it. And he didn't find it. For a number of years, he didn't find it until he got to Canada. And while in Canada, he'd heard about a group of people that were having a significant change take place in their life, a group of young people. And he decided to go to one of their meetings. And he went to the meeting that night, and he heard people singing songs to God that stirred his heart. He heard someone teach from the Bible that he had never heard of before. He, he didn't know that you could get help from God. And that night, he made the choice to give up his efforts to deal with his hopelessness, and he made the choice to turn to Jesus. And he asked Jesus Christ to come into his life, to forgive him of all of his sins, and he, in that moment, became a Christ follower. Now, if you're in this service today, if you're watching online, I want to give you an opportunity in just a moment. If that might be you, I want to encourage you to pray with me and let the Lord forgive your sins. Let him touch your life today. He would love to do that for you. And, and Scriven did that. And then immediately upon trusting Christ, he bought a Bible and began to read the Bible and began to grow, began to gain strength. He was processing life a lot better now. And in his reading, he came across a verse in, in the first chapter of James, verse 26, that says, pure and undefiled religion is to take care of widows and orphans in their time of need. And he spent the rest of his life doing something which was a part of the vision of High Ridge Church, strengthening orphans. Kids that had no living relatives. We do it in two ways through our church. We do it locally in Tarrant County through a ministry that's risen up out of our church called Hope. And uh, the title of the message today is, is a ministry that came out of our church. We want to try to help children who are eligible to be adopted to get into Christian families and to meet Jesus and become world changers. The second thing we do is we help children who have no living relatives in Ethiopia. Not a single relative survived the AIDS epidemic. Parents, siblings, no one is left alive. And we're sponsoring 56 of those. As a matter of fact, you can find out about this. Just go online, be backslash loved. Beloved Ethiopia. And perhaps you'll want to help one of these kids. They are so awesome. Uh, we get to go back, Don and I get to go back in July and uh, meet the four boys that we're sponsoring. And uh, it, it, is, it is a world-changing moment 
when you realize you're making a difference beyond what comes back to you in this lifetime, that the rewards are just in heaven. And, and Scriven began to pour his life into helping orphans. He found purpose. He found meaning. Next, next weekend, we're going to help you discover purpose in life and discover meaning. Today is to help you grab hope. Ne- next weekend is to help you to know how to walk out your life with hope. And, and Scriven found it. He was in blessing orphans and widows. Well, at about age 60, he became ill. And uh, while dying, his, uh, his, his best friend came and sat with him and discovered his journals and found that he was a poet in some ways, that he had been writing poems to his mother. And he found one that Scriven wrote in, when he was in his early 20s in, in the moment of great hopelessness and despair. He found one that was later put to music and has become one of the most popular gospel hymns in the history of the world. And as soon as I start singing it, many of you are going to immediately know it because you remember singing it years ago when you were in churches that sang the old hymns. Here's what Scriven wrote, while in a place of hopelessness. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Man, in the midst of hopelessness, something phenomenal came out of that young man. Everybody look at me. In the midst of whatever hopelessness you're dealing with right now, something phenomenal can come forth from you. If you'll just trust the Lord today to touch your life, if you'll trust the Lord, I promise you, he's going to bring greater things from your life than you can do for yourself. He did it with this guy, and he'll do it with you. God is a God of hope. Somebody say that with me, if you would. Here we go. God is a God of hope. And the message today is of hope. May the resurrection of Christ fill you with all hope. May you be filled with hope. That's my hope and my prayer today. All right? Thank you all. You've been so attentive and so gracious. I have a couple of prayers I'd like to pray before we go. So would everyone just close up your your notes and and shut off your devices? And if we can just have it be kind of still for a second. Um, I really want to try to pray my best prayers to help you right now. And the first is for those of you that would say, Jeff, in all honesty, I've not been walking with God the way he wants me to. In all honesty, I need more hope. I want God's hope. If that's you and you're in this service right now, I want to encourage you where you're seated to just boldly, full confidence, just raise your hand and say, that's me. Would you pray for me? Come on, all across the room, both services Last night, it was the case as well. Many, many people saying, yes, I want to walk with the Lord stronger than ever, and I want my hope to be strengthened. Anybody else? Just lift your hand. I want to pray for you. God bless you all. So blessed by your honesty and obedience. Father, I pray for blessings to rest upon these faithful people, your friends and my friends. And I pray, Lord God, that that hope would fill their heart right now. I pray, Lord God, that the gap would close, that the distance would be made short and small, and that they would... Know and recognize your goodness today and walk with you again like they have before. Lord, bless them, I pray, with spiritual blessings that only you can pour out on their life. Bless these wonderful people, I pray, in Jesus' name.